Hi, Monica. This is Rachel. I wanted to get um, a quick, oops, my camera's just slightly off there, um, a quick video on showing how to do a multivide. Um, this is going to be a very basic one just so that we can show the process. Uh, we start with any number um, and you can do any version of this. There's all kinds of versions in the curriculum itself. Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, modifying that. Um, at the end of this. But let's say our first starting number is two. All right, um, then we need to define our the parameters. And usually it's like this sequential numbers, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, six, something like that. Um, usually we do um, multivides in sequential order. We're gonna start with two, just to make it easy. Um, so two times two is four. And the next sequential number is three. So we have two and then three. So that would be two t or four times three. So we take the result and then we multiply that by three, which is 12. And then the next one, we have two, three, and then four, right? So we just kind of follow along. Um, and that would be 48. And we get that answer. Now let's go back and do the division. So this is the multi. So multivide is two uh, operations, multiplication and division. So this will be the, starting the division problem. So this is our final product. And what we're gonna do is draw the division house off of this line here. And we're going to divide with the starting number, which is two, all right? But we already have stuff up here. So how do we write the answer? Well, two goes into four, how many times? Two times, we're gonna write the two underneath the four as opposed to on top. It's just gonna be underneath. Two goes into eight, how many times? Four, okay, like that. And then we're just gonna divide again. Our next number is, we started with two, now we're gonna do three. Three goes into 24, how many times? It goes eight times. Then we're going to divide by four, four goes into eight, how many times? And that would be two, which should be our starting number. If at any point in the process we have a uh, remainder, that means either a multiplication error has occurred or a division error has occurred. You should never have any remainders. All of the um, division should be even or full um, whole numbers. Now that being said, if there's a really long one, like say in the lesson 40, I can't remember what lesson that was, 43, 42, right in there. Uh, if it's a really long one and you have an error up here early on, that means every answer after that is gonna be wrong. So if I said two times two is five, for example, all of these other ones are gonna be an, a, a mistake, right? So that can cause some frustration. Having lived through that um, multiple times, what I tend to do is either split up the multivide, so I only have them do two or three segments. So in this case, I would do two times two, that gives me four, and then maybe another one, two, uh, four times three is 12. Um, obviously, a more complicated, right? So I might have them do this part one day, at the end of that day, I would have I'd check their answers. If they're good to go, then the next day I'd have them continue. Times four is 48, and then divided by two is um, 24. All right, I mean, I would have them stop there. Whoops, I would have them stop there. I would check the answer, and then when it's good to go, I'd have them either the next day or later on in that day, have them continue on, and then um, get to that final answer. So this, a multivide might actually take, you know, a week to do a, a long one. Um, I also, another, that's one way. So you split it up into segments, like day one, day two, and day three for this one. Another ver, um, element, another um, modification sort of thing that I would do is I would have them do one and then I would have them holler out their answer. I would check to make sure it's right before they moved on. If it's not correct, I would just say incorrect, recalculate. I would not help them, I would let them figure out where they made the, mist the mistake. But what that does is it prevents going through the entire thing and then discovering that we messed up on that very top line, which is very frustrating to the child. So that's another way to consider modifying how it's presented. Um, but if you have a child who likes the challenge, um, this is a fabulous activity to just let them go on their own and solve on their own and then check their own answer at the very end.
I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any other questions. Take care. Bye.